I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to The Bigfoot Project. I'm not quite sure how to go about this. The only thing I can do is tell you of my experience. I believe I had an encounter with a Bigfoot. Although, even to this day, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I saw. The problem is, I'm not the only one who saw it. Many others did, too. So, here's my story. I've been a bailiff for many years. You know, the one who sits beside the judge in the courtroom. Many years, I've sat there and listened to many stories, now only to find that my story is the strangest of all. I was on my way home one night, me and my wife. We were traveling in different cars, and it was at the end of my shift. It was approximately six, and the weather was horrible. It was cold and raining, about as miserable conditions that you could think of. And then I noticed ahead of me, my wife hits her brakes. And then I noticed the other cars in line did the same thing. Just then, I looked to my right. I've traveled this road so many times throughout the years, the pole that I've seen for the last ten years now suddenly had a growth of vegetation beside it that went up the pole approximately ten to twelve feet. I thought nothing of it, but something just told me something's not right. As I looked at it closer while driving in my truck, I saw a set of eyes. The skin surrounding the eyes looked weathered but human. It was extremely tall, very wide at the shoulders. The creature looked directly into my eyes. I did not have a sense of fear, but somehow it was like telling me without speaking that he was not there to hurt anybody. Almost like it was telling me, don't pay any attention to me. I'm just passing through. I did exactly that. I kept right on driving, but the law enforcement officer in my brain kicked in. I spun my truck around so I could get a better look at this creature. It wasn't like I could do anything with it. This thing was massive, and I didn't have any of my weapons on me. And even if I did, it gave me no reason to hurt it. The thing that worried me most was I live in a very small rural area in Sussex County, Delaware. A lot of good old boys like to shoot at things they don't understand. I'm not going to say all of them, but there are a few. When I turned around to look, it was gone. There was a pine thicket with a very large ditch cut through it. I could just barely make it out. That way down to the end, it looked like something was moving at an incredible rate. I thought to myself, there's no need to even try whatever it was is gone now. Somehow I wanted to convince myself that I was seeing things. No big deal. It was the lack of sleep or any other thing that I could put in there to help me rationalize what I saw. Suddenly my phone rang and it was my wife. She was the one in front of me, along with ten other cars. She said, did you see that? I asked her exactly what did you see, and she said, it probably wasn't anything, but I saw something very large beside that pole. If I believed such a thing, I could have swore it was a Bigfoot. Of course, my wife is very pessimistic and doesn't believe in things like that. I laughed and said, you never know. You need to keep an open mind. But there's a couple of things that struck me. I was surfing around on Facebook and other people were asking if anybody had seen something outside of Georgetown. I know this sounds crazy and I'm still trying to rationalize it myself. I know what I saw and I don't believe in making things up at all. I've spent many years as a bailiff and I don't have much time for people who make up lies. The story I just told you is the absolute truth, believe it or not. When I go to my maker, I will stand on that ground. The strangest part of this is, it went through a little town at the farthest end of Delaware. Rather strange, but true. My wife and I are now divorced. We still talk and get along very well, and every now and then we talk about the event. You know, it's easy for people to say you're crazy, but we both know what we saw, and we stand by it. On January 13, 2004, I was coming home from a night class at Dell Tech. I usually take a back road over to Route 9 to get home faster. So I left college and made my way home on my normal back road detour. I got through the first half of the twisted road and came up to the stop sign to turn right onto Ashbury Road. As I did, I turned on my high beams. I came around a turn that leads to about a quarter mile or a little more stretch of road. About three quarters of the way down the road, I made out a standing figure standing next to a utility pole, so I immediately turned off my high beams, thinking it was a person because it was standing up. As I got closer to this beam, I was taken aback by its size. I started to slow down, not knowing it, I guess because I was puzzled and curious. As I stared, I could make out its bottom side, broad shoulders, 
and the fact that it was standing with its back to me, looking into the woods, and hair that came to a point at the top of its head. The entire figure had a thick black cover of hair, with no hair on its hands, but I could not see its feet. Standing next to the utility pole gave me some reference for height. I estimate it was around seven or eight feet tall. I was almost past this creature when it looked at me and looked back at the woods as if it didn't care I was there. Once I made eye contact, the hair on my arms stood up and I peeled out of the location. I was confused as to what just happened and couldn't believe what I witnessed. It was also so hard to comprehend that I seen a Bigfoot and I have seen something that's not supposed to exist. This event occurred June 7, 2003 in Sussex County, Delaware. I was driving and my son was in the passenger seat. We departed the park via Route 9, headed north a short distance on Route 1, and picked up on Route 404 West. There was very little traffic on this secondary road at this time of morning, so I drove with my high beams on and set the cruise control. Within a few minutes, I saw movement along the right side of the road about 100 yards ahead and began braking. A doe stepped onto the berm of the road and crossed from right to left. I continued braking, almost to a complete stop, in case more deer followed the doe, but she was apparently alone. Another few minutes passed before we saw another car approaching from the opposite direction. We could see its headlights glow before we could see the car itself, because we were approaching a gentle curve in the road to the right. I flicked my headlights to low beams and in a matter of seconds saw the silhouette of a large biped cross the road, from the center part of the road, across our lane of travel, and enter the woods to our right, some hundred feet ahead of us. My son immediately exclaimed, What the heck was that? I asked him if he saw it too, and he said, Yes, there were two of them. Two, I asked, and he said, Yes, a tall one in front and a shorter one, four to five feet behind it. My truck was almost slowed to a complete stop by this time, because my foot was on the brake as soon as I first spotted the creature. My son and I slowly drove by the spot where they appeared to enter the woods, but we couldn't see anything. The car that was approaching passed us at this point without slowing down or stopping. I asked my son to describe what he saw. He said a large thing walking on two legs with another, shorter thing following behind. He added that the shorter one was about chest high on the larger one. My son is near six feet tall, and he said the larger one was smaller than him. I saw the taller one, side profile as a silhouette, almost a shadow. It moved across the road quickly in a purposeful manner. I could see no arms or arm swing. It did not turn its head to look toward us. I could discern no color or body features beyond a head, torso, and legs. When we passed what we believed to be the creature's entry point in the woods, my son's passenger window was completely down and mine was partially down. A normal, moist, woodsy nighttime odor was all we noticed. Additional observation by my son in his own words. My father saw one thing cross the road, while I saw two. I use the word thing because I truly have no idea what crossed the road that night. They were not quadrupeds. The larger one walked upright at a smooth pace, no bouncing around. It didn't seem to speed up as our truck approached, and when the oncoming car drew closer to the curve in the road, I then saw the second shorter one in the glow of the other car's headlights. The second shorter thing followed closely behind the larger one. I could see that it wasn't standing straight up like the larger one, but was slightly leaning forward. The silhouette of both things appeared fuzzy, like a picture out of focus. My dad said he didn't see any arms or arms moving, but I could see the arms moving back and forth on both things. The arms didn't move very much, but I could see them. When I first put this encounter down on paper, I described what I saw as a shadow, not as a silhouette. While silhouette might be a more appropriate word, I cannot put the illusion of a shadow out of my mind. After talking this over with my son, we believe that the creatures that we saw did in fact have hair on the body and that a combination of backlighting from the car approaching in the opposite direction and my own low beam headlights caused the outline of the creature that I saw appear shadowy or diffused, perhaps a result of light shining on or through its hair. This perhaps can be supported by my son's description of the silhouette of both creatures appearing fuzzy or out of focus. My name is Jordan. I've grown up as a Boy Scout camping as often as I could as a child and into my teen and adult years. I now often go up to Algonquin Park for canoe trips in the summer, sometimes going by myself for multiple day canoe trips if no one else wanted to come. 
I'm very comfortable, and I've never felt scared being out in the wilderness. I've had bears come into the campsite in the past, and I've never been too bothered by it. I feel they're just large raccoons looking for an easy meal and not too much trouble. My wife and I had been together for a couple of years at that point. She wasn't my wife at the time. We had done several camping trips in the past, but I wanted to do a backcountry canoe trip through Algonquin Park. It's a 7,500 square kilometer park in Ontario, Canada, which is for the most part unaccessible because there's only one road that goes through it. We put this trip together somewhat last minute, and we decided that we would drive to the most northern part of the park where there's a canoe launch point. I figured there'd be no one up there because it's probably an extra two-hour drive north of an already five-hour drive. We were excited. It was our first backcountry camp together, and we were going for four days and three nights. Plus, we had our new dog. He was a ten-month-old border collie, and he's a very smart dog. It was late July in 2013. My wife and I were both in our late 20s. Everything went amazing for the first three days and two nights, and we covered some ground. Dog settled in nicely to the new surroundings and was very comfortable being in a boat. On the third and final night, after canoeing for the better part of the day, we had picked a good place to camp for the night. The lake was no more than two miles long by three quarters of a mile across. It was dead calm that evening as we cooked over the campfire. We couldn't help but notice how quiet it was. Like, I mean, really quiet like you could hear a twig break on the other side of the lake. We eventually packed up the food, and with the fire still smoldering, we made our way into the tent. Maybe 15 minutes after being in the tent, we heard what we would describe as a large branch or tree breaking with a loud crack, kind of like a tree broke at the trunk and was going to fall, but we never heard a third of it hitting the ground, just the noise of it breaking. My wife was a bit startled, and I reassured her trees fall down in the woods all the time. We started to settle back down, and then we heard what I would only describe as a very loud call, or scream, if you will, extremely loud, but it seemed a bit far away. It was deep and throaty, and not a sound that I've ever heard before in the woods. My wife was frightened and asked me what it was, and I said quickly it was a moose. She was still startled and definitely scared, but we laid there quietly, and eventually we fell asleep. I woke up first and was just laying there, not sure what woke me up, but not too long after that, I heard a giant splash of a rock being thrown into the water. It was big and loud, and the only way to explain it, to work in my head, is we must be close to some sort of cliff face or sorts, and a boulder must have fallen off the edge. My wife had heard it as well, even though she sleeps with earplugs in. She was up at that point, laying in bed, both on our back with our eyes open. Our dog was up and dead quiet too. He was sitting at the front door of the tent, like he was looking out. Then, shortly after the crack, something hit the tent. I would estimate it to be a rock about an inch in diameter. It hit the side of the tent. I didn't think much of it, probably a tree branch or an acorn falling from an oak tree. Then another rock hits the same side of the tent. Then, ten or fifteen seconds later, something else hit the tent. It was very calm and quiet outside, very still, and I remember smelling what I thought at that time was a skunk, but I don't think they're very common in that area and I wouldn't say it smelled exactly like a skunk. It was kind of a putrid odor. I kept telling myself that it's just acorns falling from the trees hitting the tent, and I told my wife the same thing. But I'll tell you, there was pure fear pumping through my veins. I was actually terrified. I kept trying to tell myself that there was a logical explanation for the sounds in these events. What I was trying to tell myself were acorns hitting the tent, but I knew damn well it was a rock being thrown. This happened about 15 times. I gave up on the idea that it was acorns as I sat there paralyzed in fear. I thought maybe there's some sort of hiking trail through the woods close to that area, and some hikers thought it would be fun to play a joke on me, throwing rocks at the tent. But there's no one around, or at least I couldn't hear anything. The rocks hitting the tent stop, and I didn't hear anything for a while. Eventually, I got out and went outside to take a look around. And to my surprise, there was no oak tree dropping acorns above us, and that steep rock face that I was sure the boulder came from didn't exist. Behind our tent going into the woods was incredibly thick brush, not something someone would hike through. We packed up that morning and got in the canoe, and before I knew it, we were in our car driving home. We didn't say much driving home, I just kept thinking about what happened earlier that morning. 
When I got home, I got on YouTube and looked up moose calls and bear calls and what beaver sounds like when it slaps its tail onto the water. Sure enough, that's definitely not what I heard. It wasn't until years later I stumbled across the whole Sasquatch thing, which before then I had thought was just a made-up thing, like the Loch Ness Monster. You know, something that makes a great story. Well, it's been years, and we haven't gone back to Algonquin backcountry camping. I'm sure the reason is because, deep down, I'm still a little bit scared. I'm still looking for closure as to why these things happened. Should I have felt threatened, or was it just curiosity? I don't know. One last thing. After hearing the recording of a Sasquatch howling in the woods on the internet, that is definitely what we heard. Thanks, Jordan. This occurred in Ontario, Canada, July 2002. The area is north of the north shore of Lake Huron, north of Blind River by about 20 miles on Bearhead Lake. The area is incredibly dense bush and in most places impenetrable due to low scrub and swamp. We were at a cottage, one of about eight or nine on the lake, on the east side. The west side of the lake had no habitation, just rock and thick bush. There are lots of critters, bears, wolves, moose, and deer, along with porcupines. I'm fairly familiar with all those animals and their sounds. For the most part, they are scared of humans, and they will bolt when they see a person. We had been at the cottage a few days, perhaps three, when whilst sitting around the kitchen table talking fishing late at night with my sons, we heard a series of grunts, chirps, and squeals. I thought it might have been a bear with young across the lake, as the cubs can often be heard squealing and playing in this area. The noises, however, were much more organized than bear cubs and were coming from two different locations. The distance across the lake is perhaps 500 yards. It was fairly obvious that the sounds were coming from two areas about 15 degrees apart. The noise of wood breaking and banging was quite loud and it was interspersed with a series of whooping grunts. We stepped out onto the deck to listen better. It was fairly obvious that one noise was getting closer to the other. My neighbor, who has lived on the lake for 40 years, was out having a beer and taking the night air. His knowledge of the woods and area is way better than mine. I called him over to listen, and as we all hushed and listened for a few minutes, I could tell by his head shaking that he had no idea what it was. The noises were really loud, and it sounded like mayhem was breaking loose, trees being smacked and banging noises, shouts and whoops. Then it went quiet really quickly which was followed by a series of deep whooping noises and clicks, which went on intermittently past the point I went to sleep. The following day, my boys headed out in the canoe out to where a fallen tree could be seen from across the lake the day before. Immediately, it was obvious that the tree had gone from our perspective. I shouted to them, where's the tree? They went across, then started to paddle back. I was looking at eagles overhead through the binos when I scanned back to the lake and my boys. I drew a line on the shore behind them when I saw this big black brown thing sitting on a boulder about 20 feet above the water. At first I thought it was a bear, but when a bear sits, its legs stick out in front, slightly splayed. This thing had knees and was sitting on its haunches with its knees up near its chest. I was not sure of what I was seeing, so I looked away and went back to it and I could see that I was not mistaken. It had knees and was covered in hair with no neck. It sat on its haunches and then slapped its hands on the rocks about three times, both hands at the same time. I started waving and shouting to the kids, who were about 300 yards away, and pointing, trying to keep an eye on it through the binos. I couldn't tell if the kids understood, so I went back to looking and waving my hand and pointing. The thing stood up and walked into the bush behind it. The thing had no neck and looked kind of straggly and matted. It did not have a bear's profile, it was like the back of its head sloped down to its back. It was huge on top, like the chest area, but it had a scrawny, by comparison, legs. The hair on its legs was thinner and lighter. When the kids got into dock, I asked them if they saw what I was pointing at. They didn't and couldn't figure out why I was waving. I told them I seen a bear. When I asked them about where the tree had gone, they told me someone had dragged it to the beach, which in their words was weird. I did not and have not told them or anyone of what I saw. It's sort of embarrassing, and I figure they would have just thought I was just kidding them. The noises that we heard the night before continued that evening, but from a point further up the lake. We did not hear from them for two nights after that, 
Then we heard about an hour of crazy noises, similar to, and I hate to say it, to a monkey, but with great bass and chest in it. The sounds had weight. Moose make odd noises, also bears, but neither had the weight of this sound. It was a big sound. I have heard owls make the most amazingly complex series of whoops and yells at ear-splitting volumes, but they don't have the weight or bass these sounds had, nor the organization and way the sounds that we heard were vocalized. I am sure of what I saw, and I can't think of any creature that would match what I saw. It feels really weird even to be writing this, and I'm sure on reflection what I've written above is the absolute truth as I remember it. Thanks for listening. Have you had a Bigfoot encounter and would like to share your story here? Please email me, bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.